Hey guys, let's take a look at the awesome swing of Hideki Matsuyama, who just put on a dazzling display of golf shooting 61 to win at Firestone. So amazing what he did. Now what's really remarkable is Dottie Pepper was talking about the fact that he had a very poor warm-up session and didn't seem to be controlling his ball very well. But that's the thing about these pros, man. I mean, they're just, their whole game is so good that they can bail themselves out. And uh, Hideki missed some fairways, but he still was able to get it get it around the course in 61 blows. That is unbelievable. Now, you guys may recall that a few years ago, I did uh, a lesson with my friend Dave, and he had me do the pause drill. So let's do a flashback real quick. Here's what I want you to do. Take it back. Get, get where you think you should be. Mm -hmm. And then come come down. Are you saying the that's pause? slow? Yeah. Go up, stop, and then through. You're, you're hitting the hell out of it, man. Well, I can tell you, I think the pause drill is one of the most challenging drills out there. One of the things that I think that it does is it really, it really makes you find your balance at the top of the backswing. And that's one of the crucial points of the golf swing. In fact, it's what Mr. Hogan called the crossroads of the swing. So let's take a look at Hideki as he takes the club back here. We get to see a decent amount of his belt buckle there. I think that he has to turn a little bit extra um, so he can actually pause up here at the top. Now, I'll tell you, there's something called a stretch reflex that happens with your muscles. Say, if you swing back to as far as possible, the club almost has a tendency to bounce. And your, your muscles, when they reach that point of highest tension, they'll reflex and begin to flex. So it's practically impossible to pause unless you have enough room to spare that you can kind of sit up there and feel pretty good. And that's what Hideki does here. I think that belt buckle shows us that he's given us a little bit of time, almost like a batter holding that bat ready to just go smash it. And I consider Hideki to be a slugger. Now we're going to watch his hips, watch his belt buckle. We're going to get a little anterior pelvic tilt right there. You see that? Now that's going to help him get ready to use his lower body properly. Now watch his legs as well. This is super duper key, is this knee bend. This is the biggest thing that I've learned, you know, certainly one of the biggest in my swing evolution, is I've got to learn to use my lower body properly, my hips and legs. And if your knees are, are straight, if your legs are straight, you're probably not going to be getting the most out of your swing. Almost all these PGA pros that I've been breaking down, they have this beautiful knee bend. So he goes from the pause at the top and watch him also with his upper body and the club. He'll bring that over a little bit too. You see that motion? So the anterior pelvic tilt and then the hands go up. It's like an inside over the top move. But boy, now he's ready to just smash the ball. Wow, he really goes after it. It's so amusing, I'm sure everybody gets a kick out of it when he gets all frustrated when he doesn't hit the ball like in the hole. <laughs> it's like he just drops the club, lets go with a hand, it just cracks me up. But uh, on this one, he really striped it. So let's add a couple lines and see where he's at in regards to his hip depth in the shaft plane. I think we're going to see that he's pretty standard. He's he's basically a modern type of swinger. And uh, we can see here that he's got a little bit of hip depth. This, this uh, camera may not be directly down the line, and I think he's hitting a fade here. You can see that left foot, um, there's much more distance between the, the left heel and uh, his tush line than his right foot. But he's going to do a really great job of maintaining that depth right there. Now, as he has his little 
pelvic tilt, we're going to see him get a little bit deeper. I think that's a key move. This hip depth is so important. I can't stress it enough. But this is going to help him get deeper. He gets like an inch or two deeper on that line. Now he's really ready to use his lower body to give him a little head start before the shoulders and arms unleash this golf club. And what we're going to see is a typical modern type of swinger where he's coming at the ball from above the shaft plane that he established at address. Some guys have really long arms and that gives them an abnormally low shaft plane at address. But this is what most of the modern swingers that you'll see on tour are doing is they're finding the ball with the driver, especially many inches, maybe six inches above the shaft plane, at least where their hands are. And Hideki just launches it right up the left-hand side, and he's going to cut it back in the middle. What an amazing golf swing. Now, I have to tell you a funny story. I was uh, playing at Angeles National. It's a, it's a good, challenging golf course. I think it's, it's something crazy like 140 slope. Well, anyway, I got pretty hot, and I shot a 34 on the backside. At that time, it was the lowest I'd ever shot on nine holes. And so I go into the clubhouse, and the guy behind the counter says, Hey, man, Hideki just shot 29 on the backside, so... Got a little ways to go. But uh, Hideki, congratulations. Really proud of you. And uh, it's cool that you hang out in L.A. But I really would love to see you just keep on kicking butt. You're a fantastic golfer and uh, really appreciate your work ethic. So hit them long and hit them straight. It's hard to describe the sound when Mr. Hogan hit a shot. He had this, this tenacity about him. It's really the stuff legends are made of. He was like Michelangelo and Da Vinci. You know, he was an artist with a with a golf club. This is Ben Hogan's locker right here, number fifty. He caddied for my dad. That was the beginning of their relationship. Suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. He knew what was going to happen, and there wasn't isn't anything he could do about it. Why he actually decided at that point in time to share what he told me, I, I have no idea. What I think he did was he applied physics better than everybody else. Ben Hogan never watched Jack Nicklaus practice, but Jack Nicklaus watched Ben Hogan practice. People say Hogan won't ever talk to you. Well, Hogan talked to me a lot. 